Can I ask you if there's a uh, young person watching who wants to write their first book, what advice do you give people like that? Don't make the mistake I made of spending three years in Paris thinking that because I had studied writing in good creative writing courses at Harvard, I, and I had wonderful teachers, you know, don't make the mistake of thinking you can just go and write a book. If you've never lived through anything that's worth writing about. I mean, there are an awful lot of novels that in, in which I'm sure they, most of them never get published, which are basically, I mean, what, what are they going to write about? They'll write about what it's like to be in a creative writing class. Um, you have, I mean, I essentially decided to give up writing when I left Paris and came back to Boston. And that's the and then I and the following year I was in the classroom, and um, it's interesting. The year I gave up writing is the year that I wrote Death in Early Age, um, because suddenly I was doing something that actually tore at my heart and um, worth writing about. I mean, I, I took myself so seriously. Young writers always do that. You know, and there I'd been in Paris, and I thought, well, here I am, and I'm being, I'm being given mentorship by great older writers. William Styron, Bill Styron was there at the time, and took me and fed me for, uh, on numerous occasions. <laughs> it's the only time I ever got to go to a, you know, a nice restaurant. And um, Richard Wright was in Paris at the time, literally bumped into him, and physically bumped into him in a bookstore, and others. Um, so I came back and I thought, well, you know, I must be a writer, but I knew the craft of writing, but I hadn't lived through anything that mattered enough. So I was very pompous. Young writers are pompous, and I, I remember I came back to Cambridge, and I was going to go, I was going to go back to grad school and do what my folks would have liked at that time in my life, which is become a Harvard English professor, and, <coughs> and you know, it's only the voice of Dr. King and the death of those young volunteers that turned, that that halted that and changed my life, but. Um, I remember I gave a party in Cambridge, in Harvard Square, in which I formally announced to all my friends that I'm, I'm giving up writing. I'm going to stop writing. I'm not going to be a writer, as though this were a terrible loss to American literary history. <laughs> How pompous young people are. And, and, uh, and then that year, just gradually, as I saw the nightmare of, a, of a, what racism had done to, was, was doing to these children in front of me. Uh, kids I had that year had had 12 different subs before they put me into that classroom to be their permanent teacher. Um, I, I just started keeping a journal. This is, I have kids do, you know, keep a journal. And every night I'd, I'd write down what happened that day. And suddenly, around May, my girlfriend said to me, um, you know, I hate to break the bad news to you, but I think you've written a book. And I said, well, it doesn't really have an ending. You know, I don't see it. And then they fired me. and. Um, the black parents were very loyal, and they shut down my school, and it helped to spark the civil, the civil rights movement in Boston. And, and so I said thank you to the Boston school system for giving me, me an ending to my book. And then I, of course I kept rewriting it, it took three years. <laughs> So I, I just say to young writers, don't, don't, um, I 
I mean, you have to learn the craft. And I'm still learning it all the time. Um, but you, you, uh, you also have to get into the, the muck and the, the messiness of the real world. Open up your heart, let yourself be ripped apart by anger or unbearable sorrow or incredible exhilaration at some wonderful, beautiful little child who glows in the midst of it all. You know, you've got to go through that. Um, if, uh, and, and then it's, I tell you, writing, the, I, I, I'm addicted to writing every single day, but when I'm writing a painful book, it's painful, and I get upset. I mean, I, I, uh, I will actually cry sometimes at something that that's, that's, seems like unbearable. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm, you know, speaking the unspeakable, and once um, Oprah Winfrey told me that she couldn't read my books at bedtime because they would upset her so much. And I think she was referring to Amazing Grace, which was the first book I wrote about the Bronx. And, you know, and I said to her, well, if, it, if it's so painful for you to read, let me assure you, it's equally painful to write. Um, if if um, you don't put it in, the reader won't take it out. Um, there's a Latin expression that I love, ex nihilo nihil fit. It means nothing comes out of nothing. And you just don't get it cheap. In-Depth airs live at noon Eastern on the first Sunday of each month on Book TV on C-SPAN 2. Log on to booktv.org for information about upcoming guests.